Well, let's look at what's happened in the last six months. We've got this proliferation of fake news and um, alternative truth. And I never thought that anybody would utter this phrase, but in the last week we've heard of alternative facts. Um, and I, I happen to think that words matter. Um, if, uh, if I go to my mechanic and he says, your car is safe now, but what he really means is the opposite. <laughs> I, that's not an alternative fact or an alternative way of expressing the world. I mean, the car is either safe or it's not, to the best of his knowledge. And for that matter, it matters to me whether my mechanic is actually licensed uh, and not under disciplinary action and you know, not the subject of several lawsuits and things. I mean, the, you know, these things, words matter. And I was particularly outraged when some major newspapers in the United States began writing about fake news and alternative news and alternative truth uh, because I felt that the journalists were invoking euphemisms out of a sense of misguided political correctness, uh, not wanting to offend anybody. So, you know, you can't really call it for what it is. Uh, it's, you know, there's no such thing as fake news. It's, it's a lie. It's either news or it's a lie, right? Fake news uh, is the side of a bus telling you that $350 million a week could be going into the NHS if you would vote for Brexit. Now, there may be perfectly good reasons to vote for Brexit or against it. This is not a political issue, right? Truth is not about politics. There's, there, there shouldn't be a political party that is any more invested in the truth than another. The, the, the truth should be the basis on which we have a political discussion. Okay, these are the facts. What are we going to do about them? And reasonable people may disagree about what to do about the facts. Reasonable people may disagree about the steps to take to improve the economy, but at least you agree that the economy needs to be improved, right? Uh, so when I became outraged, I did what, what a writer does. I wrote an op-ed lambasting the American media for using terms such as fake news. Uh, and I got it published in the New York Daily News, which is the fourth largest paper in the country. The first three didn't want to touch it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the, the New York Daily News uh, is still millions of readers. Uh, and, and what I said to the New York Daily News was, you are part of the problem. You're talking about fake news, just call it a lie. And if you're afraid of offending somebody, if they're lying to you, I say offend them. <laughs> Go ahead, they should be offended. The part of the problem is that uh, we've become a bit too complacent, I think. We've sort of accepted uh, a, a state of the world where, oh, well, politicians lie, nothing you can do about it. Uh, you're, you know, it's, you're gonna get cheated, people are gonna take your money. I disagree. That, that kind of complacency undermines the bedrock of democracy, which is freedom of speech and uh, Freedom of speech involves uh, being able to have an independent press that's willing to stand up to people who are lying and to hold people accountable. So I think we have to do three things. Uh, as Barack Obama said in his exit speech, and again, I don't think this is political. It has nothing to do with whether you support Obama or not. I think part of critical thinking is that you don't ignore good advice just because it comes from somebody you may not like, right? Uh, and the opposite is also true. Uh, as it happens, a lot of people like Obama, but the, the advice he gave was that democracy is not free. And as a free society, many of us who live in democratic countries have begun to take it for granted, and we've allowed democracy to be the responsibility of other people. And Obama says, as soon as you do that, uh, you start losing the very thing that you cherish. It's up to all of us. Each of us is personally responsible for making sure that there's freedom of the press for making sure that our legal systems are functioning properly and they're unbiased. In the most perfect of all worlds, you've got a legal system that is built, that is designed to protect the powerless from the powerful, the weak from the strong, to, to protect people from bullies. You've got judges whose only allegiance is to the truth. Um, and sure, there are corrupt judges. Um, there are corrupt journalists. But on the whole, the system is the best one we've got. There are checks and balances. We, we need to support these institutions. And the third institution that I think we need to support is science. Because the scientific method, ideally, 
is interested only in the truth. It's, it, it shies away from politics. Uh, there are corrupt scientists. We've seen just in recent times Diedrich Stoppel, uh, Mark Hauser, two examples of people in my own field, I'm embarrassed to say, cognitive neuroscience, who fabricated data. Uh, but it caught up with them very quickly. They were um, kicked out of their professions. Not a perfect system, but I don't think you want to throw out the work of tens of thousands of scientists for you know, four people who are bad eggs. And you don't want to say, well, the legal system is crooked because of three or four bad judges, three or four bad politicians. So uh, when I say it's each of our individual responsibilities, what I mean is that I think all of us need to take responsibility for the news that we receive, the Facebook posts we, we view. So before you hit the like button or the thumbs up or um, forward something that you've seen, I'd like to suggest you take 45 seconds or so to ask yourself, is this really true? And how can I verify it? That, that's really what the book is about. It's to give you the ability to look at something and within just a, a short amount of time, know which questions to ask to figure out whether this makes sense or not. And don't be part of the problem of sending around a story like the 350 million, a story that could get viewed a million times as a lie, where the truth or the retraction of it uh, or the fact check of it gets only 30,000 views as opposed to a million.